We are discussing the importance of local rings okay and uh, what we saw in the last lecture was that uh, uh, the uh, we have seen two uh, uh, theorems which tell us the importance of local rings. So uh, the first one was that uh, a morphism uh, is an isomorphism if and only if it is a homeomorphism and induces uh, isomorphisms at the levels of at the level of local rings. So that is a that is a characterization of uh, isomorphisms in terms of local rings okay. Then the other thing that we saw was um, we saw that a rational function okay an, an element of the function field of a variety uh, namely a function which is uh, which may be defined only on uh, a proper open subset that can be uh, I mean you can ensure that it is actually a global regular function if and only if it occurs in the it occurs in every local ring considered as a sub ring of the function field okay. So, uh, so in this so in this uh, uh, regard what I wanted to tell you is that you know there is this there is this algebraic fact uh, it is a simple algebraic fact and this is what we proved last time you see if A uh, is an integral domain if A is an integral domain uh, and uh, uh, then of course A is contained in its uh, localization at any maximal ideal. So max spec A is the uh, set of all maximal ideals of A okay and of course uh, every integral domain is contained in its uh, in, in, in its localization at a maximal ideal. This map A to uh, its localization is just the localization map okay and it is injective and that is why we consider A as a sub ring of the localization of A at M. And further this is contained in the quotient field of A which is the same as the quotient field of A of the localization of A at M okay. So this is uh, so what this tells I mean this always happens alright and what this tells you is that A is contained in therefore the intersection of all the localizations at various maximal ideals inside the quotient field okay but the fact is that this is actually an equality if you if you go through the proof of the uh, uh, statement that we made last lecture that uh, a rational function is a global regular function if and only if it occurs in every local ring okay then actually we have actually if you see that the competitive algebra that we did there the proof 
actually proves this it, that if a is an integral domain then a is exactly the intersection of all its localizations at various maximal ideals the intersection being made sense of in the quotient field of a so uh, so this is a completely you know algebraic commutative algebraic fact but it has a geometric meaning the geometric meaning is that if you take for a the uh, if you take a to be the affine coordinate ring of an affine variety okay then it's a then this quotient field of a is nothing but the function field of the variety and you are saying an element of the function field which is in every local ring has to be in has to be a global regular function okay because uh, the the ams will then be the local rings at the points uh, am for example will be the local ring of uh, the the variety with uh, the affine variety with coordinate ring a uh, at the point corresponding to the maximal ideal m okay and uh, the fact that the intersection of all these local rings is a is a nice statement uh, that uh, when you translate it geometrically it means that a rational function which is uh, there in every local ring is actually a re global regular function okay so uh, th so basically i just wanted to point out that this is an algebraic fact but it has a geometric meaning okay the geometric meaning is that uh, a rational function which is in every local ring is actually defined everywhere it's it's a global regular function right okay so now uh, what i stated at the end of uh, the previous lecture was uh, a fact about uh, birationality so let me let me again recall that statement so the so this is yet another uh, uh, nice result that tells you about the importance of uh, uh, local rings so uh, so the result is that uh, if you have two varieties which may not be related at all but you know suppose i know the local ring of at of of one variety at one point is isomorphic as k algebra to the local ring of another variety at another point then the deep result is that these two varieties are isomorphic on open subsets containing the respective points which we call as uh, birational okay so just uh, isomorphism of uh, local rings produces an isomorphism over a large open set because you know open sets are all large in the zariski topology so this also tells you that the local ring is not so local it also contains lot of global information okay it contains information on a large open set and uh, that is in a way inevitable because in the zariski topology all open sets are huge because they are all dense any open set is dense okay for a variety so of course any non empty open set so uh, so let me write this down so theorem uh let x and y be varieties uh with x small x a point of capital x small y point of capital y and an isomorphism of k algebras uh from the local ring of x capital x at small x uh to the local ring of capital y at small y so this is uh maybe i can call this uh, uh uh i don't know what i called it in the last lecture uh so let me call it as uh, phi okay i don't know what what did i call it i called it psi okay so let me call it psi let me use the same notation uh so i have these two varieties and i have points where the local rings are isomorphic by a k algebra isomorphism psi okay then there exists open subsets uh u of x v of y with x in u y in v such that and an isomorphism of varieties uh phi from u to v that takes uh so that x goes to uh phi of x is y okay x goes to y and 
which induces via phi phi hash. So, I will get a map from the local ring of V at y to the local ring of u at x and this is this map is phi hash sub y ok and mind you the local ring of v at y is the same as the local ring of y at capital y at small y because the local ring does not change if you go to a uh, an open set and similarly this is the local ring of capital x at small x ok. Uh, uh, so, phi is an isomorphism of varieties therefore, this will also be an isomorphism and the fact is that this isomorphism is this isomorphism is none other than psi inverse ok, the k algebra isomorphism given uh, k algebra isomorphism phi hash y equal to psi inverse ok. So, so in other words uh, uh, any isomorphism so what I am saying is you see if a local ring of one variety at one point is isomorphic to a local ring of another variety at another point then that isomorphism is actually induced on from an isomorphism on an on open subsets of an open neighborhood of u of uh, the point small x and an open neighborhood v of uh, the point small y they are isomorphic ok. So, the isomorphism of uh, local rings comes from an isomorphism of uh, huge open sets which contain those points. So, in other words see isomorphism at the local ring actually if you think of local ring as uh, concentrating attention at a point what you are saying is that isomorphism of these local rings has I mean it can actually be spread to an isomorphism on open sets ok. So, that is the power of uh, uh, so you know so in, and, and you know when we have two varieties which have open sub which are isomorphic on open subsets ok. Then we call those varieties as birational and uh, what we are saying here is that uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 if two varieties are birational then there are going to be local rings here uh, which are going to be the, the, there are going to be isomorphic local rings ok wherever the isomorphism is defined. But conversely if you want two varieties to be birational all you require is uh, one uh, isomorphism between local rings ok. So, that is the uh, that is the power of uh, local rings. So, uh, so let us try to prove this fact. So, the proof also uh, is uh, involves uh, just commutative algebra uh, and uh, uh, several facts that we have already uh, seen. So, here is a proof um, well so, so the first so what is given to me is that I am given x uh, I am given uh, I am given y and I am given a point uh, uh, small x in capital X and I am given a point small y in capital Y ok and what I am given is uh, at the level of uh, local rings I am given an isomorphism. So, well if I draw the diagram corresponding to this here I will get uh, well x corresponds to O x and y corresponds to O y. So, you see here I am writing the uh, well if you want this is the this is the geometric side and this is the algebraic side. So, uh, then I have corresponding to this point x I have the local ring O x x O capital X small x and here I have O capital Y at small y and then I have this isomorphism uh, which is given to me which is given to me as psi it is a k algebra isomorphism ok. This is what I have alright and what I am supposed to do is I am supposed to find an open set u here which contains x and, uh, and an open set v here which contains y and an isomorphism between u and v which induces at the point x this isomorphism ok. So, um, so my the first fact I will use is that any variety is uh, uh, is covered by finitely 
many open subsets which are isomorphic to affine varieties okay. So what I will do is that I will instead of x I will look at x1 inside x where x1 is an affine open x1 is an affine open which contains the point small x okay and similarly uh, I, I can find an op affine open y1 I can find an affine open y1 uh, an affine open subset of y which is uh, affine open means that it is an open subset of y which is isomorphic to an affine variety and which contains the point small y okay. So here I am using the fact that we have proved earlier that any variety can be covered by finitely many open sets each of which is isomorphic to an affine variety right and well what happens to uh, what happens to this diagram on this side see I will have uh, uh, I will have this so what you must understand is that there is this inclusion of uh, uh, the, the regular functions are included uh, in the local ring okay uh, and in fact what will happen is that if, if you if you go to O uh, if you go to O x1 uh, that will be uh, that will sit inside that will sit in between okay because you know for any variety restriction of regular functions is an, is an injective homomorphism okay because if I have a regular function on a bigger open set I can restrict the regular function to a smaller open set and this restriction is injective because if two regular functions agree on a smaller open set then they agree on the bigger open set okay. So this will uh, and mind you this O x1 will be well it, it is it is going to be A x1 I can write O x1 equal to A x1 because x1 is affine because x1 is affine and well uh, I have the same kind of situation here I have O y1 uh, this is sitting inside this and this is a subring of this and this is the same as a y1 okay and uh, of course uh, and what about the local rings see the the local ring of x capital X at small x will be the same as the local ring of uh, uh, capital X1 at small x because the local ring will not change if you go to an affine open set and then in this identification with a x1 this local ring is going to correspond to some a uh, uh, so you know let me do something let me call this as a uh, yeah I, I must have had a little bit more space to write things so let me move part of this diagram to the left side so that it is easier so here is y and here is y1 and here is small y okay. So, uh, so this a x1 let me call it as a let me call a y1 as b okay and uh, see what you must understand is that this x1 is a it's an affine variety therefore you know this x1 can be embedded uh, into some affine space into some a n okay of course we are working over small k which is an algebraically closed field always and similarly this y1 y1 will sit inside some a am okay so uh, so when i write like this what i mean is a uh, is that x1 is isomorphic to uh, an it as an open uh, i mean a close irreducible closed subset of an and y1 is isomorphic to an irreducible closed subset of am okay and uh, therefore uh, what you must understand is that the uh, the points the points of uh, 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 x1 will correspond to maximal ideals in a and the points of y1 will correspond to maximal ideals in b and the point uh, uh, small x will correspond to a certain maximal ideal and the local ring will be just a localized at that maximal ideal okay and where the maximal ideal m corresponds to the point small x in this in this identification of capital X uh, capital X1 with uh, uh, max spec A after all max spec A set of all maximal ideals in A by the Nullstern and Sartre is identified with the points of uh, uh, X1 because A is A of X1 alright 
and similarly the uh, so x corresponds to the point s small x in capital X1 corresponds to a maximal ideal m of a and the local ring is then just the localization of a at m okay. Similarly y uh, y corresponds to a maximal ideal neta which is which corresponds which, which comes again by this correspondence due to the null shell and such I have max spec of uh, uh, B the maximal ideals of B correspond to points of y1 okay and uh, uh, the point small y of y1 uh, corresponds to this maximal ideal neta and therefore the local ring here will be the same as local ring of y1 at y and that can be identified with B neta okay. So we have already seen this the local ring of an affine variety at a point is just given by taking the localization of the affine coordinate ring namely the ring of regular functions at the maximal ideal that corresponds to that point right. So uh, so basically you know uh, at the at the end of all this uh, my diagram uh, and you know uh, what I am going to do is I am I am going to uh, I am going to find an open subset of x1 and I am going to find an open subset of y1 and I am going to find an isomorphism between them okay and you must realize that that is good enough because an open subset of x1 is also an open subset of x and an open subset of y1 is also an open subset of y and therefore you have also found an isomorphism between an open subset of capital X and, a, and uh, an open subset of capital Y okay which contain the points x and y okay. So in other words uh, uh, you know to say it in simple words without loss of general generality I could have assumed that x and y are already affine okay. So anyway uh, so my my you know my uh, so my diagram is now uh, so I so I simplify my diagram so I have this A and I have this B and I have A uh, sub M I have B sub N and I have this psi which is an isomorphism of local rings okay this is the situation now and well uh, you know I am I am I am therefore looking at only the I am I am only looking at the affine case so uh, so here uh, in this so on this part of the diagram you know so let me uh, so let me put a line here and look at this part of the diagram I have x1 I have y1 x1 corresponds to a and y1 corresponds to b right so I have the situation. Now what I want you to understand is that the what what about uh, see if you look at quotient field of a this is the same as the quotient field of am okay the quotient field of a is the same as the quotient field of am and what is it it is the function field of x1 so this is just kx1. and similarly the here the uh, and of course A sits inside its uh, localization and the localization sits inside its quotient field okay similarly B sits inside in its lo localization and that sits inside in the quotient field of uh, B which is the same as the quotient field of B neta which is the same as the function field of y1. So this is again this again uses the fact that uh, the function field uh, of an affine variety is just the quotient field of its ring of regular functions okay. So x1 is an affine variety its ring of regular functions is A which is also the uh, affine coordinate ring of x1 and if you take its quotient field what you will get is a function field of x1 okay and the function field of x1 is of course the equivalence classes of rational functions where rational functions are regular functions on open subsets okay. So now what you must understand is that uh, whenever you have an isomorphism between two ring two integral domains then it will automatically induce an isomorphism of the quotient fields if two if two uh, 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 so this is uh, this is very natural fact uh, which comes out of the if you want the universal property of localization or the universal property of the quotient field which says that given a ring uh, given an integral domain its quotient field is the smallest field uh, which 
uh, contains the given ring name so if the if the ring is embedded in another uh, integral domain okay then uh, if the ring is embedded is in another field okay then its quotient field will also get embedded in that field so the the quotient field is the smallest field in which an integral domain can sit okay so because of that property psi will induce an isomorphism here i'll call this as uh, i'll also call this as psi so uh, uh, maybe i'll uh, so let me write this as induced by psi this is just induced by psi okay and uh, uh, and this diagram commutes okay so uh, what you must remember is that uh, it is even very easy to see what this map is okay what is an element here an element here is uh, is uh, is a fraction uh, the numerator an element of a and the denominator an element of a which is outside m okay and that is how an element here looks like and what you will have to do is if you go to the quotient field the quotient field is simply quotients of elements of a with the denominator non zero okay but you can take you can represent such a quotient as a quotient of two quotients here okay by taking the denominators as one and then uh, you can uh, you can up, you can define what this map is simply by up using this map okay so it is pretty easy to see what this map is it is it is straightforward to define okay even if you do not want to worry about the universal property and things like that okay you can directly write out this map it is the most natural map that you can think of okay. So this isomorphism induces this isomorphism okay and now what we are going to do is now we are going to make use of the fact that uh, 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 that these two are affine okay. So you see A is well A is what? A is the A is the affine coordinate ring of x1. It's the ring of regular functions on x1, and that is uh, the polynomials in a n, the the polynomial functions on a n restricted to x1. Okay, so A is just k of x1, etc., xn modulo the ideal of x1. Okay, this is the uh, this is the affine coordinate ring of x1, right? And similarly, B is uh, uh, B is the affine coordinate ring of y1. Y1 is embedded in AM. Okay, so uh, B, which is the affine coordinate ring of y1, is just the polynomials in in AM. Okay, polynomials in M variables restricted to uh, y1, and that's given by k of y1, etc. Okay, so there's a conflict of notation somehow. Uh, so let me. So I have conflict of notation. My x1 is also a variety, and my x1 is also a, a variable. So it's a pity. Uh, so let me do the following thing. Let me change this to something uh, which is more decent. So let me use s1, etc., up to sn, where si are the variables co coordinates, and here let me use t1, etc., tn. Uh, divided by ideal of y1 okay you must remember that this ideal of x1 is the ideal inside this okay it is the ideal in an and this is the ideal of y, y, y1 inside this which is in am okay this an here is uh, taken with coordinates s1 through sn this am is taken with coordinates t1 to through tm so this is tm so this so here the coordinates are s1 sn and here the coordinates are t1 tn okay so that's the situation and uh, now you see now what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at uh, so you know this a is generated by the images of, of the si's okay uh, uh, Therefore, uh, I am going to look at what happens to the effect of psi on the SIs and I am going to also look at what happens to the effect of psi inverse on the TIs okay. So, so the situation is situation is like this I calculate uh, so let me write here calculate psi of uh, let us look at psi of SI 
bar uh, divided by 1 okay. So what you must understand is SI uh, is an element in this polynomial ring okay it is a variable in the quotient you get SI bar okay and if you go to the localization you write it as SI bar by 1. So the natural map from a ring to its localization takes any element of the ring to the to that element divided by 1 okay this is the standard map into any localization right. So uh, any element here alpha will go to alpha by 1 so if I take the element SI bar it will go to SI bar by 1 so I am looking at it here right um, but then you know you can treat SI bar by 1 also as SI itself SI bar itself because if you think of everything is happening in this quotient field I do not have to write this divided by 1 but anyway I will write it so that you remember that I am taking its image here and I am applying psi to it right. So now what is this now the image of this is going to be something here alright so but something here is a co is a fraction it is it consists of a numerator and a denominator the numerator is an element of B the denominator is uh, an element of B which is uh, 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 which is not in neta in the maximal ideal neta. So what I am going to get is I am going to get uh, F i bar by G i bar okay where uh, of course F i bar and G i bar are just polynomials in the T T j's okay and uh, and the G i bar is not in the maximal ideal neta uh, that that corres that the maximal ideal neta of B that corresponds to the point small y okay. So, so let me write that G i bar does not belong to neta okay. So, uh, so what you must understand is if G i bar is uh, I mean G i bar is not in neta therefore uh, 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 so 1 by G i bar makes sense here 1 by G i bar makes sense here because it is after all uh, 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 an element which is inverted what is B sub neta B sub neta is take all the elements of B and then you divide you allow fractions where you invert things which are outside the maximal ideal neta and G i bar is not in neta. So 1 by G i bar makes sense in B neta right but then this 1 by G i bar lives here okay so it has to come from something there because after all psi is an isomorphism okay and so I, I uh, so I can look at those elements here uh, so so you know let me let me write fi bar of tj by uh, uh, so you know I just put fi bar of t by g i bar of t just to uh, uh, re remind you that the fi's and gi's are you know polynomials in the t's okay and uh, the s and of course uh, something here will be a polynomial in the s's okay. So, uh, so, so you let this and also you let psi, psi inverse of 1 by g i bar of t to be something here and that something there is going to be uh, an element uh, uh, in the uh, in here okay and if I write this as uh, well let me write this as a i bar a i uh, a i of s bar by b i of s bar when I write s I mean uh, the tuple of variables s1 through uh, sn and when I write t I mean the m tuple of variables t1 through tm okay. The, the things on this side are all polynomials in the s's and the things on this side are all polynomials uh, in the t's. And if you go to the level of quotient fields here the things on this side are essentially thought of quotients of polynomials in the S's and here uh, the elements are quotients of polynomials in the T's okay. So, so now what I want you to understand is that uh, uh, see whenever you have an isomorphism of uh, local rings okay then you know a local ring has only one maximal ideal okay. So whenever you have an isomorphism from one local ring to another local ring then under an isomorphism the image of a maximal ideal is again a maximal ideal therefore 
what it means is that the maximal ideal of this local ring the unique maximal ideal of this local ring has to be carried by this isomorphism onto the unique maximal ideal of that local ring okay and that means that uh, the, uh, the an isomorphism of local rings will uh, map given isomorphism of the corresponding maximal ideals and the fact that uh, uh, 1 by g i bar is uh, the fact that you know uh, uh, so I want to say that this uh, when I write this expression okay I want to say that this fellow here is invertible okay because you see g i uh, uh, if you want 1 by g i bar of t is a unit here. 1 by g i bar of t is a unit here because g i bar of g i bar g i bar is uh, uh, the g i bars are outside the maximal ideal therefore they all get inverted here. So, it is a unit and an isomorphism will carry a unit to unit therefore it means that a i bar by b i this a i bar by b i bar is a unit okay and since a i bar by b i bar is a unit it means that both a i bar and b i bar are units. Okay. So, the upshot of this is that both a i bar and b i bar do not belong to the maximal ideal m here ok, okay. Uh, where a i bar a i bar b i bar do not belong to the maximal ideal there ok. So, this is a this is an observation this is an observation right this is an observation. So, now uh, we have let us let us interpret this let us interpret this uh, a little carefully. Now, you see uh, see somehow you know we have to go uh, you you know you want you have at, at the level of small x you have at, at small x and at small y at the local ring level you have an isomorphism you want to somehow lift it to an open set. So, I have to go closer to uh, x 1 and y 1. So, which means that I will have to come go away from the local ring and I will I have to come closer to this ring ok. So, you know if you look at what happens to the image of psi. So, the first thing is that uh, you know if I take uh, uh, you you see the psi takes each s i bar into an expression like this all right. Therefore, if you take any but any element of a is a polynomial in the s i bars ok because a is just uh, polynomials in the s i bars modulo this ideal. So, any element of a can be thought of as a polynomial in the s i bars ok in, in the in other words we say that a is generated by the s i bars ok. Therefore, any element of a is a polynomial in the s i bars and if you take its image under psi ok then what I am going to get is a polynomial in these things with k coefficients ok and you can see that the, the denominators are given by the g i's ok. Therefore, you can see very clearly that the image of a under the image of the subring a under psi lands inside uh, this localization namely b localized at the product of all the g i bars ok. So, that is this localization b you invert all the g i bars and the product of all the g i bars uh, uh, you will have a further localization uh, this will be a, an intermediate localization because you see all the g i bars are not in eta ok all the g i bars are not in eta and that means that uh, the product of all the g i bars will also not be in eta ok because eta is a is a maximal ideal so it is prime. Therefore, b localized at all the product of all the g i bars uh, which is f a which by the way is the same as inverting each of the g i bars ok. So, this is b localized at the product of all the g i bars and that is a that will sit inside a subring between b and b eta ok. And the fact is that uh, the, the, the if you follow a by this it actually lands inside this psi restricted to a ok. Psi restricted to a will be will land inside this because after all uh, uh, what is an element of a it will be a polynomial in the s i bars. And if you apply psi to each s i bar I am going to get f i bar by g i bar. So, if I have a polynomial expression in the s i bars I am going to get a polynomial expression in the f i bars by g i bars and that is some polynomial divided by uh, some product of g i's 
okay, some product of powers of g i's and therefore it will, it will lie here alright. So the moral of the story is that psi restricted to a will will give you an injective k algebra homomorphism from this to this right and uh, and you know uh, the, the point I want to make is that what have we done uh, what have we done geometrically see geometrically what you have done is you see you have gone to uh, each g i bar is a is a polynomial is, is a regular function okay each g i bar is an element here but what are the elements here the elements here are just regular functions on y1 okay and what do you mean by inverting a g i bar inverting a g i bar amounts to going to the open set the basic open set given by the non vanishing of the g i bars okay when you invert a regular function okay you go to uh, the uh, when you when you invert a regular function the ring that you get is the affine coordinate ring of the basic open set defined by that regular function namely the locus where that regular function does not vanish. So what you are getting here is the basic open set divide given by the product of the g i bar that is a this is the locus in y1 where uh, none of the g i bars vanish okay and that locus contains the point small y okay that is because uh, uh, none of the g i bars vanishes at y and that is that is just a restatement of the fact that none of the g i bars is in the maximal ideal neta which is where neta is the maximal ideal corresponding to the point small y okay. Therefore uh, what has happened is that you know we have gotten hold of an open set here alright and we have in fact a morphism of varieties from this open set to x1 okay we have a morphism like this and that is because you see uh, psi restricted to a psi restricted to a is just uh, from a to psi of a is an isomorphism because after all psi is psi is an isomorphism so the restriction is again an isomorphism and you see uh, 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 and psi of a is contained in uh, uh, b sub product of g i bar okay and mind you this is a uh, uh, this is just a of x1 okay and this is the thing here is a of d the basic open set defined by the product of g i bar okay and the moment you have a k algebra home of some from the affine coordinate ring of one affine variety to the affine coordinate ring of another affine variety it corresponds to a morphism in the reverse direction because we have seen this uh, that there is a bijective correspondence between the morphisms of two affine varieties and the k algebra homomorphisms between their affine coordinate rings therefore the psi restricted to a you know that is a k algebra homomorphism from a to psi a and therefore it is a k algebra homomorphism from a to b uh, localized product of g i bar therefore it induces a map like this uh, which is a morphism of varieties and that is this map that is this map and so uh, so this is uh, well I do not know whether I should give, give a name to this uh, so let, let me write this uh, I will just write this as induced uh, by psi restricted to a there is a map like this and now whatever I did uh, with uh, after all a and b uh, psi is an isomorphism whatever I did with a now I can do it with b okay. So what do I do, how do I do the same thing uh, with b so uh, again what you do is that you know you look now instead of looking at psi look at psi inverse okay. So again calculate uh, let us write out psi inverse on, uh, on, on, on generators of b what are generators of b the t i bar the t j bar generate b okay. So calculate the image of uh, t j bar under uh, psi inverse okay. So t j bar is the image of t j in this quotient ring okay and it is thought of as the element t j bar by 1 here and you are applying psi inverse and you are going to get something here alright and that is going to be simply a quotient of polynomials. Uh, in the SS with the denominator outside the maximal ideal.
okay. So, you are going to get this is equal to f i of uh, uh, f j of s divided uh, bar by g j of s where uh, g j uh, bar uh, is not in the maximum ideal m you are going to get this okay when I when I take when I take the image of uh, t j bar here right it is going to be an element here alright and an element here is a fraction it is a quotient of two elements the numerator any element of a and the denominator an element of a which is outside m and of course elements of a are just polynomials in s okay red modulo the ideal of x1 okay. So, I am going to get this and again if you calculate uh, 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 psi inverse of, of uh, so if you calculate psi of 1 by gj bar Uh, this is going to give me uh, 1 by g j bar is mind you a unit here okay because g j bar are uh, polynomials which are not in the maximal ideal m okay elements which are not in the maximal ideal become units in the localization at that maximal ideal and when you apply psi to that I am supposed to get a unit here okay and I will I'll write it as a i bar uh, uh, a j bar of t uh, by uh, b j bar of t with both a j bar and b j bar with both a j bar and b j bar not in uh, the not in the maximal ideal meter ok because that is how units will look like right. So, you are going to get something like this and if you repeat the same thing that you did uh, for psi for psi inverse what you are going to get is the following. Uh, so, what this tells you is that sin the image of the subring b under psi inverse will go to the localization of a at the product of the g j's ok. So, you know I am going to have something like this. Uh, so, so I have psi inverse in this direction alright and b is a subring here when I take the image of b I am going to land in the localization of a at the product of all the gj's. So, I let, so let me write that I have a product of the gj bar this is the localization of a at the product of the gj bars and uh, this sits inside this and this of course sits inside a m because all the gj bars are outside uh, uh, all the gj bars are units in the uh, uh, in this local ring ok because they are outside the maximal ideal m all the g j bars are outside m ok. Therefore, uh, this localization sits inside this localization and uh, what is going to happen is that if I apply psi inverse to b it is going to land inside this. So, I am going to get something like this I am going to get an arrow like this which is just psi inverse restricted to b. because when I apply psi inverse to something here something here is just a polynomial in the t bars in the t j bars and a polynomial in the t j bars under if I, if I apply psi inverse I will get a polynomial in the f j bars by g j bars ok. So, it is going to be some polynomial in the s divided by some product of powers of g j's. So, it is going to land inside this ok and again uh, 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 so, again you know just as in the earlier case you can write psi inverse restricted to b is going to give you map from b uh, it is an isomorphism of b with psi b and uh, psi b is contained in uh, a localized at the product of g j bar ok and uh, but b is just the affine coordinate ring of y 1 and this is a uh, localized in the product of g j bar is affine coordinate ring of the basic open set where g j bar do not vanish. So, this is just a of d of product of uh, g j bar ok. So, the moral of the story is that uh, j, uh, just as in this case uh, uh, you get a morphism from uh, d 
product of g a bar to x 1 you here also you will get a product a morphism from uh, a basic open set defined by product of small g j bar uh, and uh, uh, and into y 1 ok. So, the moral of the story is I will if I translate this psi inverse restricted to b from b to this I will get a I will I will get a map like this I will get I have d product of g j bar which is an open subset of x 1 which contains the point x mind you the point x uh, uh, belongs to uh, this open set that is because none of the g j bars belong to the maximal ideal corresponding to x ok. So, x is in the locus of non vanishing of the g j bars and the non vanishing of the g j bars at x is uh, uh, geometric uh, expression of the fact that the g j bars are not in the maximal ideal corresponding to x ok. So, so, so as a result I will get a morphism like this I will get a morphism like this and this morphism is uh, this is this this morphism is induced by psi inverse restricted to b ok. So, you know uh, I am coming close to trying to find uh, see basically I want an open subset of x 1 and an open subset of y 1 and I want an isomorphism between them. So, uh, what we have done is we have gotten open sets here and there and we have got uh, morphisms into the ambient space we will have to make sure you have to make this open set smaller uh, to check that you get morphisms between them ok and that is where the big deal comes. So, you know uh, now what you do is you uh, I have still I have still things uh, to be inverted on the on the side of the t's I mean on the side of the s's namely the a i's and b i's and I still have things to be inverted on the side of the of the t's namely the small a j's and the small b j's ok. So, what you do is you take you go to further localization ok you here you go to the further localization of a at product of g i g j bar and you also take the product of product over all capital A i bar capital B i bar this is a further localization ok which sits inside this ring alright. Similarly, you go here to a further localization namely you take B this is already localized at product of G i bar, but you still have these fellows small a j bar small b j bar which are outside nita. So, I can pro take the product of small a j bar small b j bar ok and that is a further localization and that that is also sits inside this ok and what does it uh, what does it uh, 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 amount to what is what it amounts to is here you are going to a smaller open set namely you are going to the open set given by product of g j bar into product of capital A i bar B i bar which is an op which is open inside this and x is actually here ok and here you are going to a smaller open set namely the locus where uh, the product of capital G i bar and product of small a j bar b j bar and y is here 